Hey everyone, welcome back to another Silhouette Studio tutorial. Uh, Richard here once again. Uh, and first things first, I want to do a quick apology that this video is so delayed. Um, I recorded a two-part video that I had planned on updating to, to YouTube there, uploading rather, uh, about a week ago. But I got myself a new phone and I was shooting in a different format apparently. And that format is not compatible with YouTube. So I'm in the process of trying to figure out how to properly switch it over. I was recording in 8K unknowingly, and it is not supported in any of the formats that I can find. Uh, so once I get that switched over to a compatible format, I'll have that coming, which is based on a t-shirt that I made uh, using both standard HTV vinyl as well as printed heat transfer vinyl. Uh, so looking forward to that one being uploaded, uh, hopefully sooner than later, once I can get this taken care of. But I wanted to jump on here. I've got a couple of requests. Um, and this one today, I've seen asked a handful of times, uh, but a member on the group today, Amber, requested specifically this information. So I thought I would do a little bit more on text manipulation. <clears throat> I did my video before showing things like curved text which is fairly quick and easy. I'll just do a test. Give yourself a shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little bit of a fuzziness to my throat today. I apologize if I clear my throat a few times. But I want to get on here and take care of this while it was being requested. So we give ourselves a shape to curve. We double click our text. We drag it onto here. Quick and easy like we did before. You can then do things like change the color and manipulate it to your heart's content. Once I'm in the proper mode. There we go. Do something like this, which is easy enough. Um, but Amber requested, uh, I think she called it retro text, where we have a, a shaped text kind of interlocked with another. And in her example, it was kind of a unique shape, that it was a flat top like this. It came down square. It came down square on this side. This isn't going to be a completed shape, but we'll get the point. And then in the middle, it had kind of a curve. Something very quickly to that extent. So there was text up here that flowed up and over. It was flat across the top and flat on the ends. And then below it, there was font that followed that same shape. But again, flat on the sides and flat on the bottom. So it was a nice rectangular text with a curve shape bringing the two together. Um, and this doesn't really work with this drag method that yes, you can bring it over here and put it on here. You can change your spacing and things like we did in the other video. I believe it wasn't here. I haven't done it in a while. Yes. Um, our character spacing, you can switch that out. You can move it around, things like that, but you don't get that flat top. Obviously if we made our font larger, again, in the wrong mode, that's my mistake. Here we go. One, say 146 is probably, well, big, but you'll see a couple problems right away. Is that one, the the spacing and things are a little weird. No matter how we choose our character spacing, they'll cross weird. They won't quite flow the way we want, and they don't have that straight top to them, that flat top. So this is very good for things like just a standard curved text. Uh, going around a circle, a square, whatever you want. As far as normal shapes, this works pretty well. And then you can manipulate your spacing and things for the look you want. But for this, it's not really a great option. It doesn't really work. So let's clear all of this. Um, the way that I know how to do this in Silhouette Studio does require an upgrade. Um, I don't know of a way to do it for free, but any upgrade. Um, it doesn't have to be the business. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you need to unlock this warp tool here on the right side. I apologize, I bumped the uh, scroll bar there. It threw us down the page, I misclicked. Uh, but this little warp tool here brings up the warp menu, and this is how we're going to create the effect that is desired. So designer, designer plus, or business will all have this option. So if we go to our text, which again, you can click here, or usually out of habit, I just push T for text on the keyboard, like we talked about in the text video. And if we again did something like testing, just for the sake of a word, that says testing, testing, there we go. 
Let me just make it a word. You've got a couple of options. The first one is the one we'll be mostly using, where you choose to warp and you can manipulate. There are also some preset type warps, depending on which style or shape you're interested in. And if I'm wanting something close to these, I'll start with a preset, say this guy, for example. If we bring it up so it's big enough, you can actually see it. You can kind of see the warp effect that it has given it is similar to this. It kind of bulges on the bottom a little bit, and it's kind of pulled up and to the right. And you can kind of see that here where the I and the T are kind of bunched together. It gives us kind of this effect. And you've got some controls here. You can pull the corners to change the, the kind of text box. You've got the little marker here that can manipulate the position of the text within the text box, as well as our little anchors here to manipulate what's within the primary box. So you can take this shape and manipulate it quite a bit. So it started as this one, but now it looks more like... I guess I made it upside down. It looks like this one, but it's flipped. But I've got it in a downward curve. So you can do it th with using these and then manipulate to your liking. Or you can just manipulate from scratch. So again, I'll do T. And we'll do, uh, I'll call it, uh, she called it retro font, I believe. So let's go with retro. And then we'll make our second line that says, oops, font. And you can do this a couple ways. I found what helps me is to give myself some kind of guide to follow. Not an import or not a necessary step, but I have found that it kind of helps me. Maybe something. Eh, we'll leave it like that. We'll go escape. There we go. So we'll have this be kind of our shape. I'm going to bring, oops, I'm on the wrong tool. There we go. I'm going to bring this down just a smidge so it's closer to flat. There we go, something like that. So I've got kind of a guide as to where I'm looking to go. And then I found that if I make the font the width of our design, if this is kind of our guideline, we want our font to be the same width, or at least close. Maybe something to that extent. That looks about the same. Do the same thing with this one. Drag it up to about the same width, since that's the desired goal, is to make that rectangle font to match this overall shape. So we've got something to this extent. So we can now select our font, go back to that warp menu, and choose warp selected shapes. The benefit to using warp selected shapes instead of the preset is when I chose the one, uh, what did we use? When I chose, uh, it doesn't really matter, they're all kind of the same. But I think I chose this one here. There was the one blue dot in the middle, and then your corners with your little anchors. You'll see now I've got four blue dots in the middle by choosing the warp selected shapes. So you've got more manipulating ability if you do it yourself. So again, we want to take, in this case, our retro now and kind of pull it to the shape that we're looking for. And with this being an O at the end, we may not be able to really get this shape, but we can get close. So I'm going to pull my box down get ourselves roughly in the right place. And this does take a little bit of tinkering. There might be a little back and forth where I have to undo a move or make a change to get it closer to what I'm looking for. And the, the top dots will pull the top line of the font. So you'll see that this pulls the top. It doesn't really move the bottom down here. It stretches it a little bit, but for the most part, it stays where it is. I mean, you can get really up here and it'll pull it. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to pull the top part of the text, and the bottom blue dot will move the bottom of the text. And then the, the boxes, like we did in this example, move the text box themselves. So it'll pull everything around, which can be helpful. You can use the little piece and your little anchor here and pull it back up if you need to reshape your text a little bit. So something like that, we're getting pretty close. The E is pulled pretty far away from our reference line. So I might pull that down just a little bit. Try to get us more on tracks. So there, now we're pretty close to that line. It's at least decently to my liking. And then we could do the same thing with this one here. Choose our warp option and warp selected shapes. And we can see we're a little low, so we can drag this up. And we've still got that kind of flat top to our text. And this one will be more obvious since the bottom of the letters are all 
the same height. And for this, it might be easier to do it with all capital letters. Um, so that might be a good option is that generally, especially with this font, I believe, if we did retro, oops, retro, if I could spell, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you can see the tops are all capital letters. So let me actually change that real quick, just so we get more of that effect. I don't think it'll work now that it's warped, though. It's, it's still a font, but it's not a font. Let's see. Never tried to edit after the fact. Oh, I can. Perfect. It just didn't look like I was editing. Let's see how close to our shape we still are. No, they're capital letters. Perfect. And yeah, if you double click, you can now edit it, even though it doesn't put the line like normal. And then a single click will get you the grid to where you can manipulate again. So let's get that just fine-tuned a little bit closer to our line again. Just to really show off the effect that has been asked about. And we can get that, get that top to be leveled out just a bit. And so if we pull this guy up. And this guy up. So I've gone a little high on the blue one there. And you'll see these little, little kind of orange dotted lines help a little bit tell how straight or not straight you are. You can see they've got a bit of a, an up, a down, and back up again. So you can kind of tweak these to get that orange line a lot straighter. If you don't overly warp the text, less of this is needed. But I want to really follow that curve like in the example photo that she posted in the group. So now we've got the curve that we're trying to go for. We've got a flat or very close to flat line. If we actually do a flat line and check, we're pretty close. If we were real picky, you could click on it. You could bring this down just a smidge, get it right on the bottom of that line. Now we're nice and straight. It touches the very top of each letter and we can delete our reference line. We do the same thing again with font where we can manipulate this as we need. So we could pull this up to start. Maybe we use our little reference line. Maybe we'll do the same thing. We'll make this capital letters as well, because then we can pull it up into here real nice. I think her example was all capital letters as well, but I don't remember. I don't have it in front of me at the moment. But this will really show off that effect real nicely as we get up close to that line. You could do it in lowercase as well, but it might not have quite the same effect. Bring this down a little bit up just a smidge. And this is now too tall that I, now that I've made it capital letters. The only thing I don't like about this method is you can't use the shift to make sure like you get, oops, I'm moving too many things. Like normally you could do shift and it would lock like vertical or horizontal. It doesn't work with this warp tool. So unfortunately you have to just kind of be careful that you stay vertical versus like, you know, slightly off kilter, unless you're going for more of a lopsided effect, which I have done before, but generally I want it relatively straight, which again, the little orange dotted lines can help with that too, making sure that they're all kind of parallel to one another. So that's pretty close right there. Maybe just a slight bit more uphill in the middle. And my O here is just over our reference line. I'm pulling the wrong one, it looks like. I need this one. There we go. So that can be a little confusing too, because the dots start here, but I've pulled the top one below the bottom one, and we're wanting to keep that bottom line nice and straight. But you can see here how I can manipulate this as much or as little as I want. The blue one down here. I'm going to bring the F just up a touch. And bring it more in line. Mm, looks too stretched. Bring it back to my left. There we go. Something like that, and then we can delete our little reference line in the middle. We can select both of these and give them a color. Let's see, let's give it this blue color. It looks nice. Kill our cut line color. And then you have something like this. So you've got a nice flat top edge. Got a flat left, a flat right, and same thing down here. Flat left, flat right, flat bottom. And they kind of curve together nicely in the middle. So that was the requested information was using the warp tool and creating a retro font such as this and you can link them together in any shape you could do it using the vertical technique we talked about in the last video um, where you've got you know r e t r o written down and font f o n t and they could swing down this way you can manipulate this to your heart's content uh, either with this method 
or I like this one a little more with the extra control that you get from the four blue points in addition to everything else. So any other questions on font manipulation or anything else in general, please feel free to leave a comment below. So I know it'll make some more videos and help you get where you need to be. And until then, I appreciate you taking the time and watching the video. Uh, the likes, subscribes, and comments mean a lot. And we will catch you next time around. Happy crafting!